Last week, the United States conducted a drone strike which killed Iran's most powerful military general. This has sparked a whole conversation about the future relationship and tensions between the United States and Iran, as well as discussions about Iran's nuclear commitments. In this video, we're going to look back a bit further, discussing Iran's historic nuclear plans, the 2015 nuclear deal, Trump's rejection of the deal, and the drone strike which has reignited this conversation. Before we get to that though, I just wanted to shout out our US channel. If you're interested in this topic, we'll be putting out more videos about it on TLDR US. In fact, at 4pm GMT today, we're going to be putting up a video on the US channel where we discuss Trump's plans in Iran and why the US conducted this drone strike. If you think you'd be interested in that, then be sure to head over to TLDR US and subscribe. There's a link down below. Iran began to develop their nuclear program way back in the 1950s, but progress was initially pretty slow. In 1967, the US supplied the Tehran Nuclear Research Center with a small research reactor. Then in 1973, Iran announced their own ambitious plans to roll out nuclear power in Iran. To make this happen, they invested in education and training for Iranian scientists, as well as investing in uranium mining and enrichment plants in Namibia and France. The focus on nuclear really took center stage in the late 80s and 90s, with Iran signing nuclear cooperation agreements with both Pakistan and China. This allowed Iranian personnel to receive even more training, and China even provided Iran with a couple of nuclear reactors. Iran said this nuclear research and progress was in order to work towards their objectives to nuclear power, insisting that it was all part of their civilian nuclear program. However, the US was suspicious, and in 1992, the Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA, even reported that Iran would be capable of developing nuclear weapons by the end of the decade. Because of this, the US pressured China, Russia, and Argentina to limit their nuclear cooperation with Iran. In 2002, the National Council of Resistance of Iran revealed that there were other nuclear facilities in Iran which had previously been undisclosed. They also revealed the names of people and companies that had been secretly involved with the Iranian nuclear program. In 2003, Iran reached a deal with the EU3, that's France, Germany and the UK, which saw them cooperate with international checks and suspend conversion and enrichment activities. However, they did continue to carry out small-scale conversion experiments, taking advantage of ambiguities in the agreement. This back and forth continued throughout the decade, with various attempts at limiting Iran's nuclear research falling short. However, things began to kick up a gear around 2010, when the UN Security Council began approving sanctions on Iran. These sanctions were aimed at limiting Iran's nuclear investments, making it harder for the country to develop nuclear technology. Iran was obviously unhappy with these sanctions, and as a result they led to a preliminary agreement in 2013, where Iran agreed to limit their nuclear program in return for relief from UN sanctions. Eventually, the two sides managed to agree on a more substantial deal in 2015, the now infamous Iran nuclear deal. In the simplest terms, this deal had very similar objectives to the 2013 preliminary agreement. Iran agreed to limit its nuclear development in return for relief from the sanctions that had hobbled the country's economy. This immediately limited Iran's stockpile of enriched uranium, with the International Atomic Energy Agency reporting a huge drop as soon as the nuclear deal was agreed to. Many saw this as a huge success for the deal. With Iran's stockpile reduced, their risk to the rest of the world was also diminished, and it looked like Iran would no longer be a nuclear threat. Sure, they hadn't completely stopped their nuclear program, but many thought such a target was impossible anyway. They'd been able to limit the amount of uranium that Iran was holding, and thus reduce the likelihood of them using their nuclear technology for military purposes. While many were happy with the deal and saw it as a major step forward, some thought it didn't go far enough. Considering Iran's past, some were concerned that the measures would still allow Iran to secretly continue the program. After all, they did work around the 2003 EU3 deal, and they also kept nuclear facilities secret until 2002 when they were revealed by an outside agency. Therefore, even though Iran allowed the international community to check their facilities and stockpiles, it's not guaranteed that we're seeing the full picture. The problem is that finding a deal that completely stops Iran's program looks near impossible. After all, huge sanctions for nearly a decade didn't stop the program, so it's hard to see what could persuade them to completely abandon the cause. So supporters of the deal argued that while the deal might not be perfect, it prevented Iran from continuing their nuclear program completely unchecked. However, one man who didn't subscribe to this theory was Donald Trump. 
Trump had long criticised the Iran deal, and he made it very clear that if he was elected, the US would pull out of the deal. True to his word, the United States pulled out of the deal in May 2018. This was a major turning point for the Iran nuclear crisis, with the move seriously weakening the deal. Although the United States pulled out, the deal wasn't quite dead yet, as all of the other signatories stuck to the deal. That being said, there were almost immediately signs that the deal had been weakened without US cooperation. In fact, at the end of 2018, Iran breached the 300 kg stockpile limit for the first time since the deal was signed, a real indication that the deal was losing its power. The ultimate turning point, though, was last week's airstrike. At the beginning of January 2020, the United States conducted an airstrike in Baghdad, killing the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani. This strike, which we'll discuss further in a video on the US channel, was seen by some as an act of war, and as a result, Iran said that the United States should expect some retaliation. Then, on Sunday night, Iran announced that they'd no longer be following the restrictions set out in the Iran nuclear deal, effectively killing the deal. In their statement, Iran said that they continue their nuclear enrichment with no limitations based on their technical needs. This allows Iran to begin enriching uranium at whatever level it wants, potentially seeing them return to pre-2015 levels of enrichment, and possibly going even further than that. This doesn't mean that the deal is completely dead, and Iran hasn't said that it's actually going to be withdrawing from the agreement. Iran has said that they'll continue to cooperate with the UN's nuclear watchdog. However, it's not fully clear at this point if they will continue to allow international inspections, or if they'll begin to develop nuclear weapons. Iran has always insisted that its nuclear program is a purely civilian program, and is entirely peaceful. However, it's pretty clear that the international community doubt this explanation. It's this doubt that led to the initial UN sanctions imposed in 2010, the 2013 preliminary agreement, and the 2015 nuclear deal. The hope was that the 2015 deal would keep Iran in check, and even if Iran's intentions weren't as pure as they claimed, they could stop them from escalating their nuclear project. But with Iran now ignoring parts of the deal, they could begin production of nuclear weapons. If they went back to the levels they were at before the deal was signed, with their previous stockpile of uranium and 20,000 centrifuges, they would have been able to create between 8 and 10 bombs, according to the White House. The speed a nuclear weapon can be created is known as its breakout time. This is how long it would take Iran to get enough 90% enriched uranium in order to build a nuclear weapon. Experts predict that Iran's current nuclear breakout time is around a year, but before the deal was signed in 2015, their breakout time was a mere two to three months. Regardless, it certainly looks like Iran could develop nuclear weapons pretty quickly, especially now they've removed themselves from the limitations of the Iran nuclear deal. This is concerning to nations around the world, with the leaders of the UK, France and Germany issuing a joint statement urging Iran to stick to the deal. The joint statement said that they are ready to continue talks with all parties in order to continue de-escalating tensions and re-establishing stability in the region. Regardless of your feelings about the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, and whether or not you think the drone strike was justified, it's pretty clear that these latest moves have increased the likelihood of Iran becoming a serious nuclear power. Even if you believe that Iran has no intention of developing nuclear weapons, if they return to 2015 levels of production, they'd be able to develop weapons within months. Do you think that Iran is an increased nuclear threat, or do you think that the original deal was flawed anyway? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out our video on the US channel where we discuss Trump's plans in Iran. That video will be released a few hours after this one, so it's possible that it's already out. If not, then be sure to subscribe to TLDR US and hit the bell icon so you can be notified when it's out. There's a link to the TLDR News US channel down below. While you're at it, you can also subscribe to the TLDR UK channel for more updates on this as well as UK and international politics. And if you want a notification every time we release a video, be sure to hit the bell icon. You can also find us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And one final plug before we finish, we've also got a new Discord server where you can discuss all kinds of politics as well as non-political issues. There are even channels on there to discuss sport, memes and of course even merch. And don't worry, there's plenty of politics on there too. You can find a link to the Discord down below as well.